Hello, welcome to Education Talk. Now, today is quite an interesting episode. We'll be talking about child prodigies, and we have a real-life child prodigy in our studio today. We'll also be looking at issues on mainstream education throughout the week. I have here in the studio with me Dr. Chris Imafidon, described as the father of the brainiest family in the world and yet an education consultant. Dr. Chris, you're very welcome to our studios. Pleasure, Dr. Well, thanks for your invitation. Nice to have you here. Last week we talked about child prodigies. We'll go back to that later. But first of all, let's look at what's on the news on education throughout the week, especially what David Laws has actually said. He has increased the school's target from 60% to 65%. In other words, all schools are expected to achieve that pass rate for maths and English in schools. Why do you think David Laws is doing this all of a sudden? It's not all of a sudden. We've seen it coming for a long time because I'm, as a parent, disappointed that he's even contemplating allowing anybody to fail. By the figure you just cited, he means 60% should pass. That means 40% are still allowed to fail. In today's world, nobody should be given the opportunity to fail. He's just increased it to 65%, does it 5%? Is it going to make a huge difference? We should be, we've been campaigning for this because we understand that every single child can achieve the level that they're asking of. Why should we say we can allow only 65% or 60%? Why can't we target 100%? Because when we buy our cars, we ensure that 100% of our cars go on the road. When we buy our planes, we make sure that 100% of them fly. Why are we saying we will allow children to leave school provided only 60% of them pass the exams? If I were as a father, which 60% of my own children would I allow to fail? That, that's the first question. If we put it as a national policy, you are detached from the reality of failure. If you say that as a domestic policy, if I have five children and only four of them succeed, that's 80%, and 20% of them fail, I still be uncomfortable as a father. So why can't we say, what does every child require to succeed? We have countries in the world that are scoring higher than England. We have countries in the world that are scoring higher than the entire British, um, uh, British Isles. Why do we have to accept mediocrity? By his own standard, he believes that we we'll move from 40% failure rate, and we're now expecting, oh, 65%. The increment is just too small, too little, too late. We should find out those that failed, re-interview them why they failed, so-called failed, find out why, how we can improve so that we can now say this generation for once achieved what previous generation dreamt of. Previous generation was saying, we shall overcome. This generation should say, should say we have overcome. Because we are sending men to Mars. It takes 500 days to travel from here to Mars. Our grandparents didn't have that opportunity. So if we can send a man to Mars, why can't we teach his children to read, write, and spell? That's essentially what we're testing here. We're not testing anything uh, uh, um, extraordinary. We're just trying to demonstrate there's literacy and there's numeracy. If we can get that, you, you've laid the foundation. If you lay that foundation, we'll have a better society. We shouldn't treat education as something that is only for any group of people. So uh, if, if, if you were sitting here, I'll ask you, Honorable uh, Minister, sir, which of your children, if you have some, would you like to fail? If none of your children is allowed to fail, why would you want my children to fail? Because if your children are not allowed to fail, that means it's my children or my neighbor's children or my friend's children. If we allow mediocrity in any area, it pollutes the entire system. So we should demand excellence, we should provide for excellence, and we should work twice as hard, retrain the teachers, rekindle the, the, the curriculum if that's what Nidin is doing, re-energize learning and make learning fun, not 